the Aggies are with us, and the format is as follows. We're going to have the head coach, Marvin Menzies, open up with a statement, and then we're going to have questions for anyone on the dais. At any time, which I think the questions are top-heavy towards the head coach, we will then dismiss the student-athletes, and you can get them later on, and then we'll keep the head coach here for a while longer. This session will be no longer than 20 minutes. At this point, we'd like to have Marvin open up with a statement on the game, and then we'll go to questions with the two mic holders at the ready. Coach, please. Okay, thanks, Joe. Uh, let me begin by saying how proud I am of these, these four guys up here. Uh, my whole team, actually, but, but these four specific <coughs> players have given me all they got and, uh, and more. Um, and we're a family, and we've had some ups and downs and arguments and disagreements and hugs and crying and a lot of emotions in, uh, in, their, in their tenure with me. Uh, DK came here and as a junior college transfer and, and uh, had a chance to play in two NCAA tournaments. The other three were, uh, all four are gonna graduate and the other three were, were able to, um, to experience more success for a longer amount of success. But as far as the game is concerned tonight, um, I just wanna say that we ran into the real Kansas Jayhawk tonight. And uh, I know they sputtered a little bit there towards the latter part of the conference, and uh, not the conference, but the tournament. I mean, they made more threes tonight than they did in the whole tournament, the whole conference tournament. Uh, but I knew Bill would have his guys ready. I knew they wouldn't uh, take us for granted. Um, that's what good staffs and, and good players do. Uh, and they made shots. I mean, nine threes is, is uh, nine for 13. I mean, we do a phenomenal job guarding the three-point line. And they were able to make threes in transition uh, they were able to, to, you know, penetrate the interior and make good passes and, and, and get finishes. Got to the free throw line um, relatively well as well and shot it well when they got there. So just overall, the statistically, if you look down at the stat sheet, you go, well, they just outplayed us. And they did. Um, but I'm really, really proud of my guys. I'm proud of the season we had. We were already winners before we played tonight. And we'll, we'll all four of these guys will exit as winners. So. Uh, we'll open up for questions now. Start right here, front row. Uh, Mike Malloy of the Albuquerque Journal. Uh, Remy, <coughs> um, it was the first half, the first start of the game, it was 11 to four at the first uh, TV timeout. Did, did, the, did that start rattle you guys, do you think? Or? Um, I don't think so, we're used to that. Uh, we used to like starting a little slow. Um, we just couldn't catch up, that's what it is. Uh, they was making some tough shots. Um, we, didn't we didn't shot the ball well. I didn't shot the ball well personally. Um, yeah. Mark Rody, Las Cruces Sun News. Uh, Chile seemed like they were really you know, double teaming you guys down low. What were they doing and forcing you guys to take outside shots? Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, they were, they were coming right on the catch. So as soon as I catch the ball, you know, they were doubling from uh, uh, post to post. So it was kind of, you know, it's kind of a little hard to, you know, to go to Pascal. So we just, you know, I just had to get out, to get out of there. That's why I, I couldn't really do much, you know, because I had a double team right away. Mark, their, their, their length bothered us on their doubles. We had seen doubles all year long, but, but their length was a different double than the double we had seen in conference. And, and, it, was, and it made it difficult to get accurate passes out of it. We had a few turnovers out of it. So uh, it, that, that double bothered us, and we weren't able to you know, get that reversal and get it back into the backside like we had been able to do all year long in conference. So got to give them credit for their execution. DK, you were able to hit some shots coming off of the bench today. Um, what was what was working well for you? Um, really, just trying to be aggressive. You know, I know my guys needed me out there, especially the seniors. Um, just try to put it together, just play as a team. Uh, just took the open shots and look at it; they was they was going in. Uh, Chili's, uh, uh, you uh, uh, played in your 136th game. I think that's a school record. Um, talk about the – nobody's ever played more games in a New Mexico State jersey than you. Um, was that something you were aware of, and is that something you're – I <laughs> no, imagine that's something I, you're proud I of. I wasn't too. either. I didn't even know. I didn't know. But, you know, I mean, it's, 
it's it's special. You know, I know I missed uh, I missed I missed few games when I was injured and stuff, but um, you know, I didn't even know I played that much games. <laughs> and I was like number one on, on, on those games. Right here in the middle. Uh, Marvin, for you, Vahe Gregorian, Kansas City star. This is probably ancient history for you, but you started the season with Wichita State, and I just want, wonder what you can recall about about the Shockers, and we, d we don't know if they're going to play Kansas yet or not, but is there anything you might see in that matchup that would be um, pertinent to it? Well, we weren't full strength when we played them, but I remember you know, their athleticism, their strength. Uh, I think they were – I don't think people realize how athletic they are. Uh, they, I was watching them do shoot arounds the other day, and I mean, their walk ons were getting up and dunking it pretty, pretty convincingly. So uh, that was one thing. Their overall athleticism, I think, is, is a little bit underrated. Um, obviously, the two key guards and, and what, they, what they bring to the table in terms of controlling the rhythm and tempo of the game. And, um, you know, they got a great environment at home and on the road in a neutral court. You know, uh, that would be a heck of a matchup if they do meet. Uh, Kansas, but they'll, they'll have their hands full with Indiana. So, but I, you know, as far as to go into too many specifics, I couldn't recall. Dan <clears throat> Daniel, were there any, was there anything specific that they were doing on the perimeter to get open uh, to knock down threes? <clears throat> um, yeah, a lot of penetration. They were getting into the middle a little bit, and. Um, we're converging in the middle, which is opening up uh, the perimeter shots. And um, I think uh, they crashed pretty hard, so they were getting a lot of second chance opportunities. And uh, that's where a lot of their long distance shots came from. Right back here. Daniel, Daniel, there was a moment at the the end of the game where it was the four of you were standing there with your arms around each other. Um, what, what was what was that like? The four seniors just standing there, kind of uh, at the end of your uh, time in New Mexico State. Um, I think it was just special, you know, just all four of us connecting for that last that last time on the court together. Um, you know, for Remy and Chili and I, you know, we all came here at the same time, and um, so we yeah, we all redshirted. Uh, a year in our careers, and then uh, DK as well. He joined us, uh, you know, last year. So we, we formed a brotherhood, especially between us four, and um, you know, we just kept us ourselves together at the end. Try to pick each other up. I feel like I'm kind of dominating things here, but coach. Uh, the, uh, uh, they doubled uh, Pascal, and it seemed like every time he got the ball. You mentioned earlier their length really bothered you. Did you expect them to double as much as they did, and did you expect them to be as effective with it as they were? Well, when you look at their sizes, you yes, we did expect them to double, but you don't realize how long they are, uh, and they do a really, really good job of, of doubling without fouling. Um, you know, they. We, I thought we had a couple you know, opportunities where we went strong early and quick, and might have got hit or not hit, you know, it was really irrelevant. They just they outplayed us overall. But but I did think that their doubling bothered us uh, as far as our game plan, because we really wanted to play and get inside touches. And so we expected to get, you know, a, a double and then get it reversed and then come back inside or get a penetration or catch a cutter coming across. And, and we got a couple uh, pretty clean executions off the double. But for the most part, um, I think their length, we, we just didn't realize. And they may have been six, seven, six, eight, but they're – <laughs> they seemed like it was you know, getting doubled by two seven-footers. Uh, Coach, another thing about uh, uh, the freshman uh, Tanvir, um, he was able to get out there, play a little bit, scored a couple of buckets. I know he's been injured and really wasn't uh, much of a, a part of the rotation this year, but uh, as far as him going forward next year, is he – do you think he's going to be a, an impact player next year? Is it Tanvir? Is that who you're talking about? Tanvir Bula, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Tanvir's future is very bright. You know, he's uh, he's got a really good basketball IQ, <coughs> um, obviously legitimate size, and as he continues to improve, uh, he'll be a you know factor for us. Um, actually, next year he's going to have to play 
a lot of minutes and you've got to get in great shape, you've got to have a great off season. Hopefully this experience will be some fuel into the off season because obviously you know you know the cliches of the players are made in the off season. So uh, we, we have a certain amount of hours that we can spend with them, but the extra time and the concentration on all the things from taking care of your body to your diet to your conditioning to your skill development, all of that are after going to be close to pay close attention to. And if he can do those things, he'll come back and have a, I think, a very, very productive sophomore year. We are under 10 minutes in the session. We have two questions up right here. Hey, Coach, you mentioned the three-pointers that Kansas hit. They've been cold for quite a while coming into this game. Was there a surprise element to that, the way they hit from that range? Them shooting uh, the ball so deep, so well from deep. Yeah, it was. I mean, we – as we analyze our scouts, we look at tendencies and we look at, you know, who's shooting it well, but, and not just for the overall stat sheet for the season, but the last five, six, seven games. And uh, so we, we came into the, the, <coughs> the game under the assumption that certain guys were going to get guarded certain ways. Then they made, they made some shots, so we made some adjustments, but they were rolling a little bit and, and, and kept it going. Um, you know, uh, Oubre and Mason, all those guys were just – we, you know, you play them maybe as a what we call a two, which is a guy that can really dribble it and shoot it. But they actually all play like ones, which we consider a, a shooter, a pure shooter. So um, you got to give them credit. They knocked down shots on the big stage when they needed to. And, and, you know, I mean, they did win the, I mean, what is it, 11 times in a row or whatever they did. You know, I mean, something something ridiculous. So there's a, there's a reason they're, they're, uh, they're able to, to step up and play, you know, at the level that they did. Really looking back on your, uh, just for Chile, your career now, and uh, you know, you guys as a senior class, um, you guys probably one of the most successful senior classes in uh, NMSU history, I guess. You know, how great of a run was it for you guys, you know, getting here four straight times and a couple of getting here four straight times in the tournament? I mean, you know, like it was, it, you know, it was special, you know, it's special, like, you know, because, you know, nobody have ever done it, like, no, like, seniors have ever went four times in a row, and I just, I just think it's really, you know, I had a, I had a, like a real time in, at NMSU, and, and I really appreciate that. And you know, I love you know all my teammates to death, and I just think we we just it was just really special. You know, so. Anything else for New Mexico State? All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Congratulations on another fine season. It's okay, you can clap.